Well, hey there, friendships. Welcome back to another Curtis's Corner. If you are new here, hi, I'm Curtis. This is my corner. And on today's video, we got a movie review. Yes, we do. So for today's movie review, it has been a very long time since I have done one. I don't even know if I've done any for 2021 yet. If I haven't, then this is my very first film review of this year. This one I'm excited about because it is for the movie Cruella. So if you are interested in seeing what I have to say about this movie, then keep on watching. Cruella, starring Emma Stone and Emma Thompson of both Easy A and Superbad fame and Harry Potter fame and I believe Nanny McPhee. I'm pretty sure Emma Thompson was Nanny McPhee. This movie is gold. It is such a good film. It is beautifully produced. The costume design is outstanding. The story is pretty good as well. I only have honestly one gripe within the entirety of the movie and that is with the CGI that they choose to use uh, both on the dogs and then there is a scene where there's like someone landing in water. I'm not going to expand on that scene but if you've seen the movie then you know exactly the moment I'm talking about. Them kind of going into water was very questionable at best but otherwise it is a very well shot, well filmed, well executed film. Emma Thompson is the villain to this villain origin story. Um, that being said, it doesn't take away from how evil Cruella actually is. They do give her a backstory, how she is the way she is. They explain how she is and why she turns the way that she does. But it's still, it in no way does it humanize her. You can't really feel bad for her um, like they do with Maleficent where they just completely switched the story around and made King Stefan the villain of the story rather than Maleficent being the villain. Cruella is so good. Emma Thompson was phenomenal as her role in the villain role of the Baroness but while I've seen some people say that she stole the spotlight I don't see that at all. She was very well executed as a character but Emma Stone is Cruella. Just like Glenn Close is still Cruella, they could easily, mm, I'm not going to say easily because there were some alterations that they have made to certain characters where if this was a prequel to the live action 101 Dalmatians, then there were just things that they have changed in this that wouldn't match up to that. Interestingly enough, speaking of Glenn Close, she was actually an executive producer on this film and she had said that she would love to reprise her role in a future film to kind of continue on, I think this storyline that they were going with, which I think would be fantastic if they were to do. I think they could easily do, because this film was set in the 70s, they could easily do an 80s and 90s period piece, maybe in early 2000s with Emma Stone, do a, like a quadrilogy and then fast forward to Cruella now with Glenn Close and maybe do like one or two with her. I think it would be such a cool franchise that they could branch off into just a Cruella mainstream of movies. And I think it would be not that they would ever do this, but I think it would be so cool if they were to, if like Disney were to kind of develop the grounds, the base, the molding, if you will, for almost like a, a crossover of villains, like Cruella meets Maleficent or Cruella meets uh, Hades or Jafar or just whatever. I think it would be so cool and have kind of like their own little Disney villain universe, just like how Sony's doing it, DC's done it, Marvel's done it. I think it would be such a neat little thing to do, especially considering in the old cartoon House of Mouse, they did the House of Villains episode and it was wonderful. That being said, Emma Stone, fashion icon, fantastic actress, killed the role, great accent. I found she was like a good Cruella de Vil accent and I like how they kind of gave her her name as well. It was wonderful. The supporting roles of Horace and Jasper, I liked them. I did enjoy Jasper a lot more um, than Horace. 
just because he was kind of like the roots in reality and just like trying to humanize her again and just trying to keep her kind of like in their realm of towing the line between good and evil. But the film also kind of comes off as like resembling the Devil Wears Prada if Anne Hathaway's character were to kind of go evil and Miranda Priestly was very much more of just a, um, a bitch, if you will. <laughs> if you love The Devil Wears Prada, you're going to love this movie. Again, everything about it's just, it's beautiful to watch. I honestly, it ended the next day. I wanted to rewatch it again. It is over two hours long. Um, I think it's like two hours and like 13 minutes or something like that. And I also saw a lot of people saying that they didn't like the musical score. Not to say that the choice of music was bad, but that there was too much of it. I personally didn't really notice that too much. I was just more interested in the film and what was happening in the film and the production pieces and the cast and the execution of everything and the costume design. Everything about that I was more focused on rather than the musical score because I didn't really care about the musical score too much. I find music doesn't make me feel a certain way. I know some people will get affected by music depending on what they watch and the scenes that they put the music in. Obviously it's there to make you feel a certain kind of way, but to me, like I said, I was just there to watch the film and I saw no problem with the choice of music and how much of music that they put into it. It's very much like punk rock heavy for the 70s era. You can see all of the 70s tones that were in it. The dialogue was seemed to be, not that I'm from the 70s, but it seemed to be timepiece accurate. Um, even Emma Thompson said that it was very nostalgic for her to be working back in that kind of time era just because that's where she grew up in. So yeah, I do strongly suggest that you do go and watch it. If you don't want to pay the $30 extra for watching it on Disney+, Plus, you can always wait until it comes out. I think it's going to come out in like July or August maybe with just your regular subscription. So there is that good news for you. But I am going to be rating Cruella a massive spotted B+. It would have been an A- minus for sure had it not been for the shoddy CGI on the dogs and that diving into water scene. Otherwise, fantastic movie. You will not regret ever wasting your time watching it. And it is nowhere near comparable to Joker. Not at all putting that out there as well. I, controversial, did not like Joker. This movie is absolutely wonderful. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. If you enjoyed my review, make sure you give this video a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I put out weekly videos and hit that notification bell so you know when I post a brand new video because if you don't, how else will you know? You won't, so do it. Now, I'm off to go and do another video which you will see on Monday. It is a brand new review, so stay tuned for that. But until then, bye friendships. Bye.